to the crowd and took the women A leap of faith, a foot on the ground away from you When they say, when they say, when they say go So nuts. You guys still have these fucking, those hooks to like lift the shit up. <laughs> you don't have that? Fuck Wait, no. What <laughs> I actually wanted to talk to you about uh, in this interview uh, was about your tattoos. Oh, okay, right on. Because I think you have some pretty interesting <laughs> tattoos. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, can I maybe ask you to take off like your shirt yeah. or something? Can <laughs> I see that on video? Yeah. I'm not very uh, <laughs> sensual on doing this at all. I apologize. <laughs> Oh, that looks like a pretty new one. Oh yeah, I just I just got this um this one done and like kind of cleaned up. Um, this is my father's. I'll uh, get that for you real quick. That's disgusting. Um, <laughs> this is my father's um, album, Cream City. It's the cover of it. Um, he it's released it. Show. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Much better than myself. <laughs> um, he released it in 1977, and this is um, without a doubt like the reason that I am so enamored with music is because his involvement with music and sort of it surrounded me for however long I was. A child in in development. No, not really. I mean, I, like this, like this is something I wrote when I was like seventeen or something. So I went and got it tattooed because. I thought it meant a lot, <laughs> okay. so I did that. What does it mean? Uh, it, it says, take my picture, draw my face, make me over with purple's grace. It was basically like judging something before you actually know it, but this to me was a little more specific, so. All right, it's yeah. beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> Is that the first tattoo you ever got? Uh, no, my, my first tattoo, I was 14, and I got it on my stomach, and then uh, it sucked. Did you <laughs> see it? Yeah, well, it got co <laughs> I covered it up, oh, so it's, okay. it's all gone now, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was on my stomach. It was on both sides, and um, and I just thought, I don't know, I was fourteen. You know, I was like, whatever. How can you get a tattoo when you're fourteen? And where I'm from, <laughs> in Inglewood, you know, you you can kind of do a lot of things you shouldn't be doing at that age. So, okay. Um, I just kind of uh, took took part in that, and. Well, what did you get? What was it? <laughs> it said uh, it was. <laughs> It said faith and trust, and there was like this shitty like star. It was, I mean, it was a big tattoo because I didn't know any better, you know. And then I got older, and I'm like, fuck, like I want an actual, I want like to get my stomach tattooed, the whole thing. I want to get yeah. tattooed, and I'm like, well, fuck, I don't know what to do. So I just covered it up with this big black uh, like structure <laughs> It's on my stomach now. So. You have like a big tattoo here that yeah. says, can sweep. Yeah, it. yeah. And I looked it up, and uh, well, what I found was that it's like um, it's about like cancer and like the joyful, like still being able to have joy and yeah. laughter even though you have cancer. Like, yeah, absolutely. Kind of positive message. Yeah. Uh, and I read that you have been misdiagnosed with yes. cancer. Yeah. Could you just tell me the story? Yeah. Um, when I was uh, when I was when my mother had me, she had been going through treatment for leukemia, and so um, I was very sick. I mean. They told her that um, you know either she probably have to have an abortion in order for her to keep the treatment and, and to do whatever, and she she denied it and just um, you know bared through it and had me. And when I was born, you know, I was pretty prone to, to being ill because she was pretty sick when she was you know uh, when I was developing through yeah. the gestation. And then um, as I got older and older, I would I would get um, ailments and get sick. Fairly often, um, it was a little bit more than the common cold. They, anything from like pneumonia to meningitis, I actually caught at one point. And then um, following, following meningitis, when I was 19, um, I was in the hospital and they couldn't tell me what it was. They said that something was attacking my system and was keeping me very weak and yeah. white blood cell count was very low. And then they took me into a room and um, you know, I spoke with the, with the oncologist and, and and she told me that I needed to prepare myself for the possibility of having cancer, and then... How um, uh, old 19, yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, so I went back to the hospital, and I waited, and then they told me, oh, we don't know, and we're gonna have to wait two weeks for these test results, and for those two weeks, um, they wanted to keep me in the hospital, and I remember one night just like sitting in the hospital wondering to myself, you know, even if I do, if I do have cancer, whether I do or don't, this, this frame of mind that I'm in, like being upset and feeling like, defeated by it 
it's not gonna help me whatsoever. So I got up and I, um, I ejected myself from the hospital. I was like, I'm gonna leave. And they told me I couldn't, which is complete bullshit. Like, if I wanna leave, I can leave. So yeah. I left and I tried to just sort of shape my frame of mind. And in those two weeks, I got like, a lot of things got really, really intense and very heavy for me. Yeah. But in the end, um, like just before, you know, finding out the results, um, I was, you know, I found a really, really weird, or I guess sort of, unexpected sense of happiness and complacency and contentment with um, just life, you know, understanding that I could very well be gone tomorrow, like there's really no promise in tomorrow and so I should try my fucking hardest to enjoy today and everything that I've experienced prior to today yeah. and uh, yeah man, I, I went in and, and they kept telling me they didn't know what it was and then I came back and they didn't know and then a few weeks later, they, they came through and they're like, you know, we don't know what, what it was, but it's not cancer, you're okay, and this and that. So I was, uh, I was elated, to say the least, and then, uh, you know, they told me I had to keep coming back for checkups, and so far I've been okay. You know, um, maybe like one minor scare, but everything's been good. Like everything's been really good, so yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's yeah. cool. But when did you decide to take that tattoo? Right after I, um, right after I got out of the hospital. Um, when I found, like, when I was sitting in the hospital bed one night, the first of, the first of, or the second of, like, three nights I was there, I was looking up at the roof, and I was just wondering, yeah, a lot of things, like, what this all means, whether it was the universe, whether it was God, whether it was nothing, whether it was just coincidence, whatever it is, I, did, I didn't know how to explain how I was feeling or, or, or why it had happened to me. Yeah. And, uh in that moment when I was most confused and when, again like in my darkest moments is uh is actually when I was like granted the chance to understand that life is so fragile and that's why it's so beautiful you know life can be gone so quickly that's why you should live it you know so with with a sense of urgency and and and, and embrace it every moment and yeah. I guess all the irony like finding all my answers um while wa waiting to see if I did have cancer yeah. was was why I got the tattoo, and that's actually why it's spelled the way it's spelled, and it's a mirrored image, so I can I can see it in the mirror. So it starts here, and then it goes all the way, I guess, the other side, the other side of my collar. Now I want to make sure that when I'm living for myself and in the now, like I want to make sure that that. that I'm doing something for someone other than myself. You know, I mean, I can do all I want and you can be as selfish as you want and you can enjoy as much as you want for yourself, but yeah. it's not as uh, enjoyable if you can't share it with someone, you know? What well, made you realize that? Um, <laughs> but funny, funny enough is uh, my failed relationships with women, actually. Yeah, just like having uh, sort of broken it off with a couple people in the last few years and understanding myself as a, a big part of the, the problem that I thought was everyone else. You know, like, oh, yeah. you know, she did this, or <laughs> this isn't working, or touring. Or, yeah. No, nah, man, it's just about you. It's just about, you know, how much you want to put in, how yeah. much you can put in, and, and understanding, you know, what it's worth for you and, and for others, you know? Yeah. It's a very, it's very um, like, give and take. You know, and you, people always want to take and take and take, but no one seems to want to give anymore. So. I want to just make sure that I give as much as I can um, while doing this, these things for myself. I definitely think that my, my actions on stage have a lot to do with um, how I'm perceived and I completely understand it and completely I accept that, you yeah. know, I accept that. But you're a different person on stage, aren't you? Certainly, yeah, I'm a much different person. All those things that, that are done on stage are, 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 are my sort of uh, absolving or, or dispelling of things that I haven't been able to say. Like, I've never been able to talk about them. So yeah. on stage, it's like when I feel the most human and the most appropriate to act that way. So yeah. you're actually more yourself when you're on stage. In, 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 a, in, in, a, in some fashions, yeah. Back to your tattoos, yeah. what's your favorite one? My favorite tattoo? That's a good question. Everything from... Can, can yeah. we see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's, oh, wow. that's the Great Western Forum right here, and that was where my old tattoos used to be. This is a, an old uh, blue band lyric. This is Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City. Nice. That's my spirit animal. 
I, like a wolf. <laughs> I, I got a little. What, what's your spirit? What's your spirit animal? <laughs> yeah, it's just like. <laughs> no, it's actually that was a jest, but yeah, no, it's just it's just like the anim, like an animal that you feel would represent you, like your soul. And I always tell people that yeah, I think a wolf would be pretty good. They have they have like this camaraderie, this really strong sense of camaraderie, which is really cool to me. Um, but they are at the same time like very. They can be uh, a little volatile. So so yeah, just just I'd like to kick it with my homies, and we we're not gonna eat anyone, but. We'll definitely roll Roman, Roman packs. <laughs> All right. Well, the last question is: um, Do you have any future plans for tattoos? Um, or what did you? Yeah, actually, you guys can't see, but there's a really handsome gentleman behind the camera. I was gonna get his uh, <laughs> his face tattooed onto my face, but first things first, I have to remove the beard. So maybe after that. I'll be doing it. Yeah. I'm